you singled me out. Yes, I did, jerk. I don't mind my video starting with, yes, I did, jerk. That's okay. But what I actually was jerk, you know, being frustrated about, don't want that in the video. All right, so work, power, and energy. This is officially unit three in, the, um, in our, uh, our curriculum guide. Uh, but power is it's gonna be a, kind of a subset. We're gonna focus on work and energy. I intend to get most of work and energy done before Thanksgiving. You know, it's only five days, but we can get almost all the major stuff. But problem solving with it, we'll have to wait till we come back. Um, I've got a couple of labs and stuff that I want to do. Integrating force and integrating uniform circular motion into work, something we'll have to do when we come back. But um, we can get a lot of it. In. It's, it's not as difficult a topic. However, there's a difference between using work and energy as a means to solve a problem and understanding what work and energy and force are about. Today is about definitions and about how the things we've already talked about are integrated with the ideas of work and energy. First things first, I'm a realist, is that the concept of work is different than your definition of work. Work is a physics term that has a specific definition. And although there are many ways that the books talk about this, here's what I want you to know. I've had some bad handwriting, Mr. Shelton. I guess you're already looking forward to the good times. The weekend is almost here. probably say it as I wrote it, but I want to make sure I get it right, and I want my handwriting to be a little bit neater this time. Work is the method by which a system's energy is changed. It's hard to find a, a good, because, I mean, how many of you are programmers? Is there anybody who programs? So you understand the word method has a specific meaning in programming. It's a similar meaning here. If you wish to change something's energy, the only way you can actually change its energy is by doing work. This is true in all of science. It wasn't explained that way in chemistry, but it is still true. Now, chemistry has the ability to release and transform energy in chemical reactions, but if you wish to change the energy of a system, work must be done on that system. So as a, as a phrase goes, work is the method by which something's energy changes. Now, there are many methods in which you can do work. We are going to talk about physical work on a system, but there are other forms of work. So please be aware, work is a broad term that indicates how the energy of a system changes. Now, to that end, work and energy. I've not defined energy, and I'll, it'll take some time before I can define it fully, but work and energy are scalar quantities. They do not have direction. An object has energy. Something can do work. But there's no direction here. Which means our definition of positive and negative go back to their old definitions. So because there's no direction, if you do positive work, you increase the energy of a system. And if you do negative work, you decrease the energy of the system. hard to write this sentence out. I just, I've written it three different ways, three different times today. But the thing that connects one object to another, the thing that connects you to a system is the force that you apply. Force is the connection. It's how energy is transferred. Energy is transferred through force. That's what connects the two objects together. So to do work, To 
do work, a force must be applied along the direction of motion. Now, there, there's a lot here. I want to unpack pieces of it, but I want you to imagine that you are going to throw a baseball to a friend. Now, when you go to throw the baseball, you're going to change the velocity of the baseball. The easiest way to detect a change in energy is by looking at velocity. I'm not going to write that down because I'm out of space, but I would encourage you somewhere in there that the number one indicator of a change in energy is a change in velocity. It is the most basic form of energy is velocity. And it exists in places that you may not already know about. For example, temperature is a measure of velocity. It's a measure of the velocity of the particles of a system. The faster they move, the hotter the thing is. So when we talk about velocity being a, a very basic way of measuring energy, it is the most basic form of energy, is motion. There are other forms of energy, and we'll develop several other forms, but every other form we talk about requires interaction. So potential energies and things of that na nature, where energy is stored, requires two or more items to be connected. So the most basic form of energy that a system can have is motion. Now, if you, t if you go on in physics, you'll find that there's other forms of energy that are basic too, like mass. But we're just gonna skip those for today. So let's go back to my uh, statement. If you throw a ball, throw a baseball to a friend, you have to apply a force to the ball over some distance in order to change the ball's velocity. That was you doing work on the ball. You do positive work increasing the ball's velocity. Now, be aware, that means the ball gained energy. At the same time, the ball was pushing backwards on your hand, which means during that same time, you lost energy in order to give it to the ball. Newton's third law means that every time something gains energy, something else had to lose energy. That's, that's what Newton's law requires. So the act of me throwing the ball means I gave the ball some of the energy I had. So I'd stored that energy up, I threw the ball, I did work on the ball and increased the ball's energy at the expense of the ball doing work on me, decreasing my energy. So when we talk about work, we are talking about the method upon which an object's energy is changed. In that instance, the person lost energy while the ball gained it.